Hello, good evening. It's News 360, live from the News app here at Adesawe Kandai Nakra. I am Aisha Yakub. My name is Alfred Okanse. Coming up in the bulletin tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paid. And Piccadilly Biscuits. My life insurance. Office of Special Prosecutor invites suspended CEO of Public Procurement Authority. Ejenim watching a jail over public procurement breaches allegations. Also, former President John Dramani Mahama demands that government makes public shareholders of Ghana Amalgamated Trust. National Career Association Ghana petitions Postal and Career Services Regulatory Commission to reduce registration fees. In business, governments roll out action plan to guide implementation of African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. And on the international front, Brazil's Environment Minister Ricardo Salas heckled at climate change meeting over a record number of fires in Amazon. We'll bring you details of these and more tonight here on News 360. Remember, we're live on BSTV's channel 279 all across the world on TV3 Ghana, on Facebook and on 3news.com. We're going to our first story this evening and the Office of the Special Prosecutor has invited a suspended Chief Executive Officer of the Public Procurement Authority, Ejenim Boateng Ejei, after a preliminary investigation in an alleged public procurement malpractice in that documentary. This follows President Kufuado's letter which directed his suspension and subsequent referral of the case to the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice and the Special Prosecutor. The Special Prosecutor in a letter stated that the matters of preliminary investigation has reached such a stage that instruction for a full investigation into possible procurement malpractices in the nature of corruption and corruption-related offences have been issued. Investigations by freelance investigative journalist Manasseh Azuria Awoni has revealed that Talent Discovery Limited, a company incorporated in June 2017, uh, which has ABAJ as a shareholder, has won almost 14 government contracts through restricted tendering. Now, the journalist Manasseh Azuria Awoni established in the documentary that the company was engaged in selling of those contracts to other entities including a funny company uh, he the journalist set up to the purposes of an undercover job so uh, portions of the interviews uh, big part in the documentary is what you see on, on your screens right now uh, there Now, the expose by freelance investigative journalist Manasseh Azuria Wuni revealed that a company incorporated in June 2017, Talent Discovery Limited, won a number of government contracts through restrictive tendering. Also revealed that the company was allegedly engaged in selling contracts. An encounter with the general manager of the Talent Discovery Limited, Thomas Amor, revealed that TDL sold road contracts to Kedra Enterprise, a fake company Manasi used for the investigation at a cost of 22.3 million CDs. However, CEO of the Public Procurement Authority, ABAJ, who is said to be a shareholder of the company, denied knowing anything about the sale of contracts by TDL. Upon further probing, ABAJ told Manasseh that Talent Discovery Limited was for his cousin, but later said it was rather for his brother-in-law. And this is a developing story and the reactions indeed have been coming in from, from various areas. Uh, meanwhile, the Director of Communications at the Jubilee House uh, as a presidency, Eugene Ahin, is saying the swift response from the president is an indication that he is committed to pursuing this matter to its logical conclusion. He spoke in an earlier interview. Almost every single allegation that is made against an appointee of the president, at least he moves swiftly to make sure those, invest those allegations are quickly investigated by the relevant institutions of state. Um, this is just one example of what the president has been doing since he got into office. Every single um, allegation of corruption or allegation of conflict of interest or any 
any any any any allegation whatsoever at that level against any appointee office. He moves quickly to make sure those invest those allegations are quickly investigated, and that's the same thing he's done in this matter. Um, mm -hmm. um, all all of them, per my estimation, have been relatively swift. So this one here is no different from what the president has done um, since assuming office on the seventh of January, twenty seventeen. Right, and, and, and in the same vein, there have been uh, concerns, public commentary on the fact that, well, this, is, this suspension wouldn't do much because the government will just suspend someone and they've tagged the president a clearing agent. The commitment has been the same throughout since the president assumed um, office. Right from the day, for example, when um, at, at the vetting of the then Minister for Energy, um, Honorable Wache Jaco, when allegations of um, bribery were leveled against him um, by um, some members of the uh, minority who were also members of the, the appointment committee, the first thing that happened was the institution of a bipartisan probe into the matter. Well, staying on Manasseh Azuria Wuni's um, expose, and we're going through some state institutions that the Talent Discovery Limited had contracts with. Uh, uh, there is the Ghana Cocoa Board, which is the first uh, one that the uh, TDL had contracts with. Also, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. There's also the Ministry of Education, also Ministry of Works and Housing. It also had four contracts with Ministry of Special Development Initiative to construct one village, one dam project. And at the time of filing this particular report, um, the uh, Talent Discovery Limited had been shortlisted for restrictive tendering by the Bank of Ghana for the supply and installation of air purifiers. And also the board confirmed TDL was shortlisted by the Ministry of Inner Cities and Zongo Development for a contract in 2018. some of the state institutions that CDO had contracts with Alfred. Fantastic. So, uh, Aisha, thank you for that. Clearly, a very, very interesting development there. And uh, it's in, in indicated about 14 government contracts mm -hmm. Aisha was giving to this particular or awarded to this particular company. The man, Manasseh Azura Wuni, is joining me via Skype uh, this evening. He was supposed to join us in the studio, but for some security reasons, we would have to resort to this. But, Manasseh, thank you for your time uh, this evening. Now, I want to find out, first of all, how do you react to these the responses from, from, from the presidency, suspending the, the, the CEO of the Public Procurement Authority, writing to Commissioner of Human Rights and Administrative Justice, that Shraj, and then now the special prosecutor also inviting uh, the, the CEO who's been suspended. Well, I think it's very commendable. Uh, we hardly get such swift actions from uh, duty bearers. So I commend the president highly for taking the first step to suspend the man and also referring the case to the special prosecutor and also Shraj. Two different issues are involved and we know Shraj does well when it comes to conflict of interest investigation. So we are only hoping that those two state institutions would also do their work and do it very well. Respond to comments, for example, that I mean, this responses and uh, referring this case to appropriate authorities may end up like any other that has come up in the past conducted by Anas Arimiya Anas, for example, and that we may not get the expected conclusion that you have in, in mind. Well, well that, that is, is a possibility. possibility. And if that should happen, we know who to hold responsible. I have had issues with the way the police try to handle uh, some cases in the past. And we all know in this country that the police service of Ghana is not independent. They are uh, looking uh, behind their shoulders. And in this way, I mean looking at which political party or which government official they will please or displease. But, but the strike is supposed to be independent the office of the special prosecutor is supposed to be independent. So if they do not do their work well, I think the president has done his part. And we are looking at these two state institutions too. And that is not to say in the past they've acted in ways, some of them have not acted in ways that give the Nians the confidence that they will do things right all the time. 
I remember in 2016, Draj conducted investigation, conflict of interest and alleged bribery investigation into the Ford saga. And I've had reason to point out to Draj mm. that obviously it was it, it set out to clear the precedent and not to do a good job. So we are hoping that this time round they will do a good job. And doing a good job doesn't mean they should by all means punish those who have been named in the documentary. If they go into the matters and they realize, well, they are not guilty, they should be set free. If they go into the issues and they realize that, well, they are as guilty as charged, the law should take its form. In all things, we expect fairness from these institutions. Then they should be firm. Well, but what expectations do you have personally uh, in putting this particular video, the documentary that you did? What do you expect out of this? Uh, documentary? As a journalist, I do not think that it is right for a referee at the Public Procurement Authority to double as a player in the procurement process. I do not think it is also fair that somebody will get government contracts and sell them to people or companies that do not have the expertise, the competence, not even the tools to deliver because they were prepared to sell a road contract to me. I don't have any knowledge about repairing roads or even fixing roads. So if I got the money and bought this contract, the nation would waste money and in a year or two, everything would erode. So these are my findings. I think these state institutions are going to look beyond whether it is right or wrong to situate these acts in the existing laws and be able to come to a conclusion. Mm. So there are certain things that are journalistically right, or you may see them from a journalistic point of view, but legally there may be other nuances or other issues that we may not consider. So I cannot conclusively say that this is what I expect to be done, but I have been able to uh, bring uh, out certain issues these that things. are but, not right. And I hope that certain pronouncements would be, would be made so that whoever goes back to occupy the PPA CEO position or any such position would know how to act and act in the best interest of us Ghanaians. Manasseh, 30 seconds, very quickly. Do you, did you get an impression that Indeed, the board of the PPA was also uh, to be implicated in any way in, in all of this because there are many who have suggested that the board should also be suspended after this particular expose. Exactly, because if the board will sit down for the PPA CEO to head a due diligence unit, and this due diligence unit works on contracts that are bidded or that the CEO has interest in. And at the end of the day, this CEO is the one who supervises that department. And God is telling us that as many as 14 of such applications came and were worked on, I think the board did not act well. Okay, I want to thank you, Manasseh, for your time uh, this evening. Manasseh Zerawone is the man, uh, the uh, freelance investigative journalist who worked on this expose, contracts for sale. Aisha. Moving away from that, supporters of the opposition National Democratic Congress in the Sawasi constituency have urged the party's leadership to fast-track resolution of all outstanding issues impeding the party's primary in the constituency. The constituency is one of the five constituencies where primaries have been put on hold. A parliamentary aspirant, Masaudu Mubarak, has petitioned the party's leadership over attempts to frustrate his intention to contest the incumbent MP, Muntaka Mubarak. Ashanti regional correspondent, between Spio Gabra has visited the constituency to gauge the mood and interact with regional party executives on preparedness for Saturday's polls. Come Saturday, the National Democratic Congress goes to the primaries to elect parliamentary candidates for the 2020 general elections. Here in the Ashanti region, all seems to be set for those elections or primaries. However, 
um, the Aswansi constituency elections have been put on hold by the national executives due to some grievances between the two aspirants, that is Muntaka Muhammad, that is the incumbent, and another aspirant, Masawood Mubarak. So that election here in Aswansi will not go on on Saturday. We are currently at Aswansi to engage the mood of some of the constituents, especially the supporters of these two aspirants, to know how they feel about the suspension and how soon they want the national executives to resolve the grievances so they can get a candidate for the 2020 elections. Are you aware or have you been informed that uh, come Saturday there will not be any primaries here? Yes, I know for sure there will be contests in Asawasi because yesterday at mid midnight I heard of General Deputy Secretary saying about the Saturday on the 24th the contest we are going for the 203 co constituency and the rest of 63 constituency is full because of the few problem we are facing. So party see we mumma we must go to Mbarakamba. Mutakanko we say we are on pusa. See to no. Yebe yebe no. Effect effect get a blouse. Mutakanko no one aye yepe. Inti masawu no. Yeyi na aye. Stay na stay. Fi asem. Aye de ya. I've been joined by the Ashanti Regional Secretary of the National Democratic Congress all in preparation towards the primaries come Saturday. Looking at Aswansi, we just had a communication that uh, Aswansi has been put on hold. Why that election has been put on hold and how soon you anticipate that there will be an election in that constituency? That is a release I also chanced on yesterday in the media signed by our general secretary what i do know however is that somebody petitioned the functional executive committee and subsequently the matter was referred to the honorable doa jaho committee of conflict resolution for a hearing and the subsequent determination the committee has completed its work and the uh, report has been presented to the general secretary of the party i do not know and i am not in the position to tell precisely when that outcome will be made public. Um, you heard me speak with the Ashanti Regional Secretary of the National Democratic Congress who is affirming that indeed the Aswasa constituency primaries would not be organized by the communication from the General Secretary. But in other three um, constituencies, there would be elections. Beatrice Piogabra, TV3 News, Kumasi. Thank you, Beatrice. Now, a Kwabinya District Magistrate Court has remanded three suspected criminals into police custody until September 4 for unlawful entry and stealing the three Frank Dogbe, Bernard Omagu Barak, and Bukhari Adamu were arrested with the stolen arms and ammunition from a police post within the Abokobi Ayimensa District, leading to the interdiction of two officers. The three accused persons, aged between 22 and 25, pleaded not guilty and were remanded into police custody by the magistrate, Helen Sewa Miriku. Two other suspects, Selassie Yao Aja and Patrick Tete, a.k.a. Soldier, are at large. The arrest on August 16 followed intelligence into the recent missing rifle case by the Adentan Divisional Police Command leading to its retrieval. Bernard Omagu Barak and Bukhari Adamu in their caution statement admitted selling the weapon to Selassie for 5,000 cities but received 3,000 cities as part payment. On August 17, the police retrieved the rifle with a magazine with 19 rounds of ammunition instead of 20 ammunition as recorded at the police station. Bernard Omagu Barak and Bukhari Adamu later led the police to arrest 22-year-old Frank Dogbe on August 19 around the Kwatam police station. The police has meanwhile cautioned the public against harboring of the other two suspects as anyone found will be held liable for abetment of crime. Two officers, the Abokobi Ayimensan District Commander, Superintendent Edward Tete, and the Station Officer of the Aquaman Police Post, Chief Inspector Christopher Beko, were interdicted 
in connection with a missing rifle. The Police Intelligence and Professional Standards Bureau, PIPS, was also directed to investigate the conduct of the interdicted officers. On MTN Video Reports this evening, a concerned citizen reports on an abandoned toilet facility at Tonlo District in the northern region. This is how the toilet for Puyili D Primary School looks like. As a result, the peoples, because of fear of their lives, they have resorted to open defecation. Look at the cracks. As a result, they have abandoned it. Look at the roof. We are appealing to authorities to help get a toilet for the people. Do send us your video report via WhatsApp 0551 433044. That's 0551 433044. This is live here on News 360. Remember, there's a lot more coming up in the world of business. With an AQM Mensa Abrampa, do stay. It's been a year since Pope John Senior High School celebrated our 60th anniversary and the luxury acrylic paint came to our aid. They made our buildings glow. It's amazing how after one solid year, the buildings are still shining. Indeed, the luxury acrylic paint is the best. Remember, it's acrylic and therefore lasts longer on your walls. Choose the luxury acrylic paint. Paintimo Champion. If everyone's family wants to make it big In everybody's eyes, the Mensas are different It is not because of how loudly Grandpa Mensa boasts <laughs> My 70th, no table, just sing it It is not because of how Mrs. Mensa is making big plans to open a new shop It's all about a kind of projects, one can try and one title and that one blow Mrs. It is not because Mr. Mensa's son has a list of fantastic dreams as tall as the Jamestown Lighthouse Hey Kofi, what's up? I'm going to be the captain of the biggest ship. I thought she wanted to be a doctor. That was yesterday. It is not because Mr. Mesa is always giving great advice. Kofi, don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. But it is because Mr. Mesa takes his own advice. He took a my life insurance policy for his family so that they can feel free to live the life they want. Be a hero to your family. Get a my life insurance policy today. My life. Live more. Be a hero to your family. Girls don't play football. Those are for girls. You can't do engineering. Do arts. You can't work. You should be a housewife. Yes, she can. She can. She can. Softcare gives you the best protection so you can do it all. Softcare's advanced comfort fit design naturally molds itself to your form, while its lead guard prevents your time of the month from getting in your way. Soft, not weak. Softcare. Yes, she can. Can you put your job? Why do not know? Is that not your wife? Eh? Or coin? Every time your children are falling sick, you don't have money. Stop, everyone. Baby, baby, baby. I stop. What's the TV beer for tonight? You know I like that sweet scented insecticide spray. Mm, uh, you know, oh. the baby on the porch. Now the beer pit in living room, huh? Bad what do you hear? Hey, <laughs> you <laughs> Me love you, baby. Or do you dare? Of course. I take very good care of my wife and children. So I always win. If you want to protect your family against mosquitoes, there's still this sweet scented perfume coil now. I repel the mosquitoes. I know I'm a wish baby. And the spray eh? also sweet scented. It kills all crawling and flying insects. Heaven insects. <laughs> oh, sharp no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Prevention is always better than Mausanka or heaven insecticide spray. And then the coil. If it's a heaven dear. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA.
of Dilly Choco Cookies, made with the finest Ghanaian cocoa. Now introducing Piccadilly Butter Cookies, a new addition to the Piccadilly family. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. And your custom double deal mega promo. Your LED TV signal, and your ultra slim, digital, satellite. Now you have inbuilt decoders with more. A man over 100 channels. Nasco 32 inches, 699 Ghana cities. 32 inch care, 799 cities. 40 inches, 1049 cities. 40 care, 1299 cities. 43 inches, 1299 cities. 43 care, 1499 cities. Yes, answer. The best energy saving air conditioners for full. NASCO 1.5 horsepower air conditioner, 1390 cities. NASCO tabletop fridge, 599 cities. NASCO 4 burner gas cooker with oven, 599 cities. Quiet just soon, you know. Frying 0500-000-105 and a 0500-000-106. Carphone Ghana Limited. Tadia! The business news segment is brought to you by MTN 4G Plus, Universal Merchant Bank, West Hills Ridge Property, Lunat from Tobinko. A very good evening to you and thanks for staying with us right here on News 360. Let's look at our business updates for tonight with me, Nana Ikria Mensa Abrampa. And beginning with the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, has revised the penalty for defaulters of the excise tax stamp from 100% to 200% of applicable tax. Now, the Chief Revenue Officer of the Excise Tax Stamp Division, Kwabnapo Iwa uh, Anto, during an enforcement exercise in Accra, said defaulters will be processed for court. The Chief Revenue Officer of the Excise Tax Stamp Division of GRE, Kwabna Apau Iwa Anto, said, the authority will apply stiffer punishment to ensure compliance. There are situations where people apply for stamps to be placed on 250 ml bottle products and we find them on 1,000 litre products and 750 litre products. That is an infraction of the law. He said the Ghana Revenue Authority presently has two traders before court and six others being processed by the police. They are prosecuting two, two uh, offenders. Uh, people who have faked their stamps, people who have taken stamps from us and they have, have faced them on other people's products. There are other six cases that are under investigations. You know, we have reported to the police. He encouraged consumers to help enforce the excise tax stamp by downloading the new application which detects fake stamps. Many goods without tax stamps were seized in Accra. The excise tax stamp is specially designed with digital and other security features which is affixed on excisable goods to show that taxes and duties have been paid. It is affixed on specified excisable goods in Ghana, whether locally manufactured or imported. You are here, I know here. I'm not the owner. Now why the, who is selling? If the owner knows the owner, who opened the That's why I said I'm calling the owner when I get it. Right, so government is expected to roll out an action plan to guide the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Now, this action plan, among other things, is to remove all trade barriers and allow for free movement of people and goods and services between member countries. The trade agreement ties with government policies to have a Ghana Beyond Aid, the agreement which values the African market at $3 trillion, would give Ghanaian companies the opportunity to compete and do business with companies in the continent without paying extra charges. The Minister of Trade, speaking at a conference, said the meeting is looking at the opportunities available for Ghanaian industries. The second objective also was to try and then find out how we are going to take advantage of the AFTA. If you understand it and you are unable to take advantage of it, then you are back to square one. So that's why we had two objectives for this conference. Now, I hope that to some extent that we've been able to achieve our objectives. 
He added, the Secretariat will keep sensitizing members on the execution of a policy. We need to be able to go to other parts of the country also to listen to them, particularly the rest of the regions, to get a sense of their own understanding of the CFTA and what the expectations they have from government to help them to be able to take advantage of this. The conference is also to promise realistic solutions to some of the challenges that may arise from the implementation. Away from that, the National Career Association Ghana has petitioned the Postal and Career Services Regulatory Commission to reduce its registration fee of 3,500 Ghana cities. Now, members made up of unlicensed operators insist a reduction would enable more prospective operators to register. The commission this year conducted two soups in collaboration with the police and arrested more than 200 illegal operators. They were liable to a 500 penalty unit fine and in some cases, six months imprisonment. Their reason for not registering is a 3,500 city registration fee and 1,500 city annual renewal, which they insisted was too high. We want our members to register under them because our members are duly registered under the laws of Ghana and we want them to register. So we are doing all these collaborative efforts to ensure that the prices are reviewed so that even the registered members themselves want the prices reviewed because they don't have anybody to stand in for them to uh, petition. The executive secretary, Hamdaratu Zakaria, encouraged them to pay up, warning that the commission will continue to clamp down on illegal operators. Following up on our last operation, which was done in June, a lot of them came to us and then they just said no. The fees were something they couldn't just come up with as a go. So they bought the forms, went through the process, the applications have been approved and we've agreed on a payment term for them. So I think that's what they should be doing with us for now. The commission was established under the Postal and Curial Services Regulatory Commission Act 2003, Act 649. All right, so we have more news on 3news.com. Just visit there, click the business button, and you are okay. My name is Nanikia Mensa Brampa. Alfred is standing by. Nanikia, thank you for the business news. Now, former President John Dramani Mahama is demanding that government makes public the shareholders of the Ghana Amalgamated Trust. He also described the Bank of Ghana's crackdown of the financial sector as a national security threat. He was interacting with the public via social media earlier today. Created major problems in the banking and financial sector, including deepening the already widely held mistrust and lack of confidence in the system by many Ghanaians. And there appears to be no end in sight. It has also dealt a significant blow to the indigenous banks because such institutions usually have no external support to count on. While this development may appear as a threat to only the businesses that have been shut down, it is in fact a threat to our national security. Indeed, as has been widely touted, ownership of capital matters. The ethnicity of capital is real, and the banking sector and financial system of a country are part of its national security architecture. The developments in the banking and financial system and the matters arising call for great concern for all who have been affected by this financial sector turmoil, especially because it is an issue that threatens our country's national security. We must all be worried about the businesses that have collapsed, the licenses that have been revoked, the massive job losses, the hardship this is causing to some customers, and the trauma of having their lifetime savings in jeopardy. There's also the consequence on the health and well-being of customers and workers, including honoring their obligations as parents by providing for their families and dependents, paying school fees of their wards, and paying rent in order to give their families decent and safe places to lay their heads among others. 
These are trying times indeed. And as a leader of the main opposition party, I cannot look on and consent. We cannot look on without our voices being heard and without being on the side of the many people who may be agonizing over the situation because they have lost their capital investments. Right, so tonight we'll bring you a follow-up of a story that was covered on News 360 yesterday. Punishment for unauthorized use of military gear is a fine or an imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year or both. But what are the processes to follow if a public figure needs authorization? Owusu Warai has been speaking to the Director of Public Relations of the Ghana Armed Forces, Keno Agri Kwashi. <laughs> What does the law say about people who don't have the permission to use military uniforms? What is the law saying about that? Okay, I have uh, some excerpts of the law here. Uh, restriction on the use of military uniforms and equipment. Act uh, 1967, NLCD 177. The section 4 talks about the offense. Okay. Any person who contravenes any provision of this decree commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year or to both such fine and imprisonment. You can be fined or you serve a prison term not exceeding one year or both. Colonel Eric Agrikwashi noted his office operates an open door policy stressing that the Ghana Armed Forces has in the past provided direction and assistance. We help film producers, we give them uniform, we give them equipment, vehicles and those things to shoot their films. We give it to them, but those things are controlled. Whilst encouraging celebrities who may need the uniform for performances to seek authorization, he cautioned offenders will be made to face the full rigors of the law. People are now committing a lot of criminal activities using military uniform. For now, a lot of people don't even know that there's a law like that. But ignorance of the law is no excuse. Such things shouldn't be encouraged because if we are not careful, criminals will get involved and also be wearing the thing. He says he's also an entertainer. The next time he comes on stage, he wears a dress to dance. Then he closes, he picks his gun and he goes to rob. All right, so for instance, I've seen Shatawali, I've seen Stoneboy, I've seen Sydney, I've seen other top entertainers mount the stage in full military gear. Let's assume that they didn't have authorization. Now, going forward, if they want to appear on stage in a military uniform, what are the processes that they have to go through? They, they need to write to us and give the reasons why they want to use the uniform. And if the reason for which they want to use the uniform is going to enhance the image of the institution and also will not bring a disgrace upon the uniform they are wearing. I think they will be allowed to use it. So well now you know and I hope you're better informed. You can't use the uniform but you must seek permission first. My name is Miriam Mose Ajman. That's it for Entertainment News tonight. There's more on 3news.com. Have a good evening. My name is Alfred Okansi. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Thanks very much for watching. <laughs>